Hello, Namaste. It's me, your science teacher, L.B. Hamal. I'm going to teach you grade 9 science, the chapter Adaptation. This program is brought by Metro Papshan Bharatpur Chitwan. Well, this is a distant teaching and learning program. I'm very sure you are enjoying your learning from home. Stay safe, stay home, and stay learning. Education for all. Well, before starting, I would like to welcome you in my class, sharing my slides. Okay, so have a look on my slides. Thank you. Well, distancing learning, so Bharat for Metro Paps and Chitwan, you're welcome. Stay home, stay safe, and stay learning. Education for all. Well, so let's begin today's class. Today, I'm going to teach you adaptation. And adaptation is meant for survival and reproduction. Because of adaptational characteristics that organism survive and able to reproduce successfully. So that is the meaning of the life, being survived and being successful. Well, so we talked about adaptation of plants in the previous class. Today, we are going to talk about adaptation in animals. So animal has got different habitat, having the animals of diverse habitat. They found many types of habitat, such as some found in water, some of them found in the, in the, in the air, they fly, and some of them found on the land, and some of them found in extreme cold or extreme uh, hot area. So it's high altitude animals found in the polar animals found in snow um, covered areas and uh, some of the animals found in desert, the jerk animals. So aquatic animals, they live in water. So we will be talking about what sort of adaptational characteristics are required to be survived and able to successfully reproduce while living in water. Likewise, aerial means animals flying in the air, flying in the air. So what are the characteristics of that organism so that they are able to fly in the air? So just like an airplane, how they are able to fly. Likewise, terrestrial animals means the animals, they live on the land and even in the land, um, some of them, they fly or glide, they live in the a den or cave, some of them live in a burrow, some live in the rock or tree and adapted for climbing, some adapted for hunting and some adapted for the fast running and many more. So desert or jerk animals means they live in desert. Okay, good. For example, aquatic animals, all sort of fishes, aerial animals, for, like, for example, the birds and some of the mammals, for example, bat. Terrestrial animals, for example, the tiger, cheetah, elephant, buffalo, desert animals, for example, the camel. So we're going to talk about their adoptional characteristics and one by one. Okay. Well, so I would like to share my screen. Have a look. Okay. Um, adaptation in animals. Animals are importantly adapted in their habitat. Otherwise, they will be banished. The adaptational characters in different habitat brings them to survive and reproduce successfully. That is the meaning of the life. On this regard, animals are broadly classified as aquatic animals, aerial animals, terrestrial animals, and desert animals. We just talked about this. I think no need to re-explain. Well, so let's talk about adaptation in aquatic animals. They've got a streamlined body. A streamlined body means they have got the body shaped like a boat or an aeroplane pointed at both ends so that they, they are able to minimize the water resistance while swimming in the water. They have got what? Waterproof scales. The body is covered with the scales, which is waterproof that prevents from decaying. Number three, they've got paired and unpaired pins and flippers, 
So pins meant for swimming and flippers meant for swimming. For example, the pins are present in fishes and flippers are present in dolphin and whales. They are also aquatic animals. And they've got gills for respiration, basically in the fishes and other uh, arthropods. But they respire with the help of the lungs in some cases like in amphibians and aquatic mammals like dolphins and whales. They have got a bladder that's called swim bladder that helps for swimming at different level and X is the organ of buoyancy means balancing. So as they uh, inhale the swim bladder expands and easier to float when the fish exhales um, it becomes smaller and and easier uh, to dip down in a deeper area of the of the water. Some of the, the helistream fishes and firms, they have got adhesive pads on the abdominal part or some neck region or around the mouth. Because of that, they are able to attach to the stones, rocks, and not washed away by the strong uh, upstreams. They've got excessive fertilization, a lot of eggs, and very high degree of fertilization in the water. The fertilization takes place um, in the water. That's external fertilization. Why excessive fertilization? Because there is high chances of mortality when they um, fertilize excessively. There is um, th there is anyhow some chances of surviving. If a small portion is survived, there will be hundreds or thousands of them. That is the reason. Some examples, fishes, dolphins, whales, crabs, so octopus, for example, whatever the animals that live in water. Okay, so let's summarize. Streamlined body, waterproof scales, pair fins or unpaired fins, flippers. Flippers is the fin-like structure, but together with the bone or muscle, not only the thin and the tiny fins. Gills for respiration and some of the firms, the lungs, they have got swim bladder, they have got adhesive pads and hilly stream farms, and excessive fertilization. In some of the cases, some of the, uh, the fins are modified as the wings and adapted for swimming or gliding. Okay, so a fish adapted to live in water, it shows very high degree um, aquatic adaptation. So it has got the scales covered the scales cover the body and the fins um, the mint for swimming. So the dorsal fin is on pair, uh, the caudal fin is on pair, and other fins are pair. Pair means they appear, they present in pair. So scales of fish, fish is covered by the scales, and the scales acts as just you know our clothes or you know waterproof so jacket that prevents entering the water into the body and prevents the decaying of the, the muscles of the body because of the water, the scales are the waterproof. So we talked about swim bladder. Uh, there is uh, the bladder balloon-like structure where um, the air is filled and, and that, that is responsible um, the, for, for swimming and helps in swimming. If, if it is fully filled with the air, it becomes um, um, the fish becomes lighter and easier to float when, when there is no air, air is exhausted, it becomes heavier and it, it sinks deeper in the water. So here is the, um, the swim bladder. Apart from these other adaptation characteristics, the gills, uh, the gills actually takes the oxygen dissolved in the water, which is very suitable for aquatic animals. Um, so that's why the gills for respiration. So that sort of things. And the caudal, the big fins. Caudal fins means the fin of the tail is acts as the rudder, rudder, R-U-D-D-R-E, rudder, or paddle that helps swimming and changing the directions. Okay, so uh, the fish is perfectly adapted for, for the water or aquatic habitat. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see the swim bladder, how does it look like? That's a swim bladder, it's a big one, just like a balloon filled with the air, and it has got a small duct, that's called the pneumatic duct. Pneumatic duct means it directly uh, from the lungs goes into the, the swim bladder to fill with the, uh, 
to fill with the air. So air is filling it. So that's a, the swim bladder of the fish. Helps swimming. So when the air gets filled, the fish becomes lighter. So gills for respiration, so different um, the fishes are showing the gills looks like like this and this helps for observing the air dissolved in the water so that the respiration in the water is possible. The respiration with the help of the gills is known as branchial respiration. What is branchial respiration? The respiration with the help of the gills is called branchial respiration. The gills absorbs the oxygen present dissolved in water. Next. So have a look. This fish is a, it's, it's a type of fish found in ocean called flying fish. Okay. So its pectoral fin means the fin just behind the eyes are modified the, to be bigger and longer and stronger acts as the wings and, and because of that, these fishes are able to fly to some extent or simply they can glide. So this fish is known as flying fish. Its generic name is Exocoitus, E-X-O-C-O-E-T-U-S. Okay, so, so have a look, flying fishes, these are exocoitus, they are flying off of the, the ocean. They cannot like uh, 500 meters or one kilometer, they cannot fly like this, but they, they, they fly like um, the 50 meters or 20 meters, they just like fly or glide, the jump looks like flying. Okay, so this is aquatic adaptation, very special ad adaptation of the fish where the pe pectoral fins are modified and to develop is the wings and, and able to fly. Next, there are some, some adhesive structure in the hill stream feces, um, just like here. So this is the adhesive, adhesive pad or adhesive structure. Because of that, this fish is able to hang on the rocks of the hilly stream and not washed by the uh, strong current of the water while flowing from uphill to downhill. Aquatic adaptation in dolphin. Dolphin, though they respire with the help of the lungs, but they have flippers for swimming and they're adapted to live in the water. So, let's talk about more about aquatic, aquatic adaptation. Aquatic adaptation is categorized into two types as a primary adaptation and secondary adaptation. Primary aquatic adaptation is the aquatic adaptation where the organism originally uh, burn and leave, uh, burns and leave in the water. For example, the fish or fishes or aquatic creature. The secondary aquatic adaptation means the animal actually does not burn and leave originally in the water, but when they grow, they go to live in the water. For example, duck go for swimming in the water because it has got the webbed feet. That helps, that help for swimming. That's why the duck shows the secondary aquatic adaptation. The, the adaptation characters that develops in the terrestrial animal to live in the water, and that's called secondary aquatic adaptation characters, and such adaptation is secondary aquatic adaptation. Okay, I think you pretty much understood about this. Okay, so adaptation in the aerial animals or flying animals, so aerial animals, let's talk about this. Aerial animals. Aerial means related to air. The animals that live in the air, or basically they do not live in the water, from, sorry, in the air permanently, but they fly and you know at the end they come on the land and leave or the tree, whatever. But they fly, they fly. So here is a question: How do they fly? What are the characteristics because of them? They are made to fly in the air, just like an, an aeroplane. Okay, cool. So first of all, their body has got the feathers. And the four limbs are modified into paired wings. They have got toothless beak. They have got pneumatic bones. 
And they have got um, the air sacs. So basically, I'm talking about the birds. There are nine altogether, nine air sacs in the body. So, and they are modify hunting, catching fish, and many more. They have got strong claws and beaks. And they have got a kind of strong person. So, so have a look. They have feathers, the body is covered with the feathers. They help in, in, in flight. They have paired wings, the four limbs are modified into the wings for fly. Toothless beak, there is a beak also known as bill, B-I-L-L, bill. Toothless means no teeth. If there were some of the teeth that would make the heavier head, so that if no tooth, the head becomes lighter, easier to fly. And they have got pneumatic bones, means hollow bones. Bones just like a tube filled with the air that makes it and uh, lighter and easier to float in the air, to fly in the air. The body is uh, with the, uh, a lot of air sacs altogether nine in avian fauna, avian means the birds, uh, which are continues from the lungs to the, the main bones like humerus and femur, etc. And they have got a strong claws and beaks for hunting and, and, and um, the protection, offense, and defense. And they have got very strong claws for pressing. Pressing means um, holding the branch or some object to shopper so that the bird can sit there and can can slip there without falling down. That's that's mechanism, that process is known as pressing. P-E-R-C-S-I-N-G, pressing. Okay, apart from this, uh, the female has got only one ovary uh, that uh, obviously reduce, reduces the weight of the body that makes uh, the bird um, easier to fly. So out of these, uh, uh, have a look more things about them uh, in the slide. Let's have a look on, on my slide. Okay, so have a look. They have got paired wings, streamlined body means the body is aeroplane shaped. So there will be minimized minimize, minimize air resistance. Uh, the body is covered with the feathers helping uh, flight. They've got toothless beak or bill and they have mobile neck so that they can see all 360 degrees to be uh, protected from the enemies. They have pneumatic bones. Uh, what do you mean by pneumatic bones? Uh, P-N-E-U-M-A-T-I-C. That's a hollow bone filled with the airs. Uh, so that the body becomes lighter. Pneumatic bones, uh, they are hollow and filled with airs and very strong. Um, the, they have got air sacs, continues with the, uh, with the bones and lungs, filled with the air that makes the body lighter. They have a strong claws and beak in the carnivorous and not or wood breaking palms or cracking palms. So it's when they have to break the, the knots and wood, they have got very strong beak. Example, all the birds, eagle, sparrow, kingfisher, balser, Etc. Okay, cool. So have a look more. Birds adapted for flight. So that's a sparrow. That's the next one is the eagle. Okay, so adapted for flight. So the beak, neck, the feather, wings, the legs, with the claws, etc. Okay, have a look. An eagle adapted for flight. They're flying, having fair wings. They look like they're ready for hunting or something. Have a look, very strong claws. They're ready to uh, attack something. The wings and the feather for flight. So I have a look at the wings and feather that helps um, them to fly. The claws for pursing and hunting. So the pursing, the first picture shows the pursing. A branch of tree is walled by um, the claws of the bird. That's called pursing, so that the bird still can slip there and but does not feel. It just like just it just locks, locks, get locked, so that does not fall. So bird claws. Varieties of the claws are there, and especially in hunting varieties or species, the claws are very strong with the uh, with the very strong uh, nails or claws. Uh, okay. Claws for hunting. So uh, have a look. This piece. Uh, this bird is 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 hunting a fish and holding a fish on the claws. So the claws meant for the hunting, modified, very strong, uh, and modified for hunting, and easily. 
uh, grasp the fish. It's various modifications of the feet and claws of the birds, for example, in the coot like that, mallard like that, that's just like duck, and a hawk like this, woodpecker like that, goose like that, uh, okay. Likewise, ostrich and parrot like that, jacana like that, and, and the crow like that. So the parrot has got very strong, um, the perch, because um, it has got very strong claws. Strong in a carved beak or bill in the carnivorous form, for example, the beak of the vulture and other eagle type, they hunt, they lacerate uh, the flesh, they take the flesh out of the, uh, the animal, dead animal, or a live animal, or from their um, um, the pair, prey, so that they have got a strong and curved beak. Also, they have got a very strong claws as well. So have a look. The strong and curved beak for parrot, um, of parrot, parrot cracks the knot. That's why it needs to have a very strong and pointed beak. Parrot cracks the knot. For example, wall knot. Okay. Likewise, the beak of the duck is modified for restraining food from the mud. So have a look. The the beak of the the dog is flat, spoon shaped, and having just like not really the teeth, teeth like structure, and these are meant for restraining. And why do the the beaks of the dogs is spoon flat and spoon shaped to strain the food from the mud, to strain the food from the mud. Strain means you know picking the right one and leaving the the the. Uh, not a useful one. For example, throwing the mud out and, and getting the grains or insect to eat or, yeah, that's a straining. Straining means um, picking the right one and unnecessary one, just throwing out. The wet feet of the dog, the, that for swimming, and so wet feet have legs, so that's for swimming. Okay, so by studying that, the, the deep divers, they made um, the feet like that and show that easier to swim. In the in the ocean, so beak of the kingfisher is modified for fishing. It looks like a pair of tongues, a pair of tongues that catches the fish easily, very strongly. And the fish has got no chance to escape out of the beak of the kingfisher. And claws and beak of the eagle is modified for hunting. The strong claws and strong beak that is the adaptation for hunting, hunting adaptation, and modified for hunting. Woodpeckers big for pecking the wood, so it makes a wall uh, in the in the wood. So yeah, to make the nest, uh, its 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 beak is very strong, so that it pecks the wood to make a hole. Also, there is pneumatic or hollow bones and ear sacs. So pneumatic bones means the bone hollow bones, bone without bone marrow, and a lot of ear sacs altogether nine. So nine ear sacs are there. So have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the smaller two, eight and nine. Altogether nine air sacs. And the air sacs continues to the humerus and continues from the, the lungs. That means the air is expanded all over the body and helps for floating in the air means helps in the flight. So pneumatic bones. The hollow bone of the birds is called pneumatic bones. Air sacs in the avian body means the bir bird's body. So uh, the air is filled in the body and the body becomes lighter. That helps for uh, flight. Okay, let's talk about adaptation of terrestrial animals. Well, um, there are a lot of terrestrial animals. Um, the one, if we see one animal, it has got one type of uh, very special adaptation characteristics. If we see another, it has got another. So it's very difficult to figure out uh, the adaptations of terrestrial animals because it's very varied. So it's, I'm going to um, uh, summarize uh, the whatever the things possible. Um, just talking about uh, terrestrial animals um, and their adaptations. First of all, we need to think about say and so. It's, uh, we can categorize them very broad categories. For example, so let's talk about some of the animals. They are categorized as volant and another arboreal and also say scansorial and three fossorial 
number four, got a show real. And number five, Jerick. So these are the animals living on the land, but the land animals are very diverse and modified diversely. And I already told you, it's very difficult to figure out exactly these are the adaptational characters because if we look one animal, it has got some special adaptational characters. If he, she, and others, they have their different adaptational characters. But, but broadly, we can classify the terrestrial animals as follows. Volant, volant means the terrestrial animals, they are, they are modified for flight. They are modified for flight. They are, they are, they are the the aerial animal, but sometimes not truly the uh, true truly the aerial animal. So it's not truly the aerial animal, but they show some sort of flight or gliding. The flight can go from lower level to higher level, but gliding, but gliding always comes from higher level to lower level. Okay, good. So arboreal or scansorial. Arboreal, scansorial means adapted for climbing. And fossorial means adapted for digging. And cursorial means adapted for running. And xeric for adapted in the desert. D-E-S-E-R-T, -E -E single S. You should remember that, okay, single S. If you write double S, that's a something sweet dish that is normally taken after lunch or dinner. Okay, cool. So volant animals, they are, they are terrestrial animals. They are adapted for flight or glide, G-L-I-D-E, glide, flight or glide, flight, they fly, glide also they fly, but they fly from higher level to lower level. Okay, uh, arboreal or scansorial animals adapted for climbing rocks, climbing trees, or climbing walls or ceilings. Fossorial animals are adapted for digging the ground and making a burrow, a burrowing animal that make the hole under the earth. Cursorial animals are adapted for running. Jarek animals, they are adapted to live in the water. Bull animals, for example, um, the squirrel, for example, the birds, for example, um, let's say um, bat. Okay, cool. Arboreal or scansorial animals, for example, monkeys, snakes, etc. Posterior animals, digging animals, for example, rat, rabbit, snakes, porcupines, etc. Corsorial animals, adapted for running, cheetah, um, horse, etc. Desert animals, adapted in and living in desert, for example, camel. Okay, so we'll be talking about some of the, the volant characteristics in the um, animals, are, uh, terrestrial animals, arboreal, posterior, cursorial, and jerrig. So have a look on my screen. Okay, cool. So terrestrial animals can be explained as volant, adapted for flying or gliding forms. For example, birds, bat, squirrel, flying, flying frog, this would be F-R-O-Z, so just a spelling error, I'm sorry about that, F-R-O-Z frog. Flying lizard, also known as a draco, etc. Arboreal is scansorial. These are adapted for climbing. Example, monkeys, snakes, etc. Fossorial, adapted for digging, for example, rats, snakes, porcupines, rabbits, etc. Cursorial, they are adapted for running, for example, horse, cheetah, deer, etc. Cursorial, they're adapted for running. Oh, next one, the jerrick adapted in the desert environment, for example, the camel. Okay, cool. So let's talk about volant adaptation, flight, adaptation for flying. For example, eagle and the bat, so they fly. They have got the wings in the birds and they have got petazia in the, in the bat. Petazia means the thin fold of the skin that acts as the, the wings, okay, means for the flight. So volant adaptation, the first one is flying, flying frog, and second one is flying lizard. We say draco. Okay, volant adaptation. Adaptation. Actually, they do not perform really flight, but they perform glide because they fly from higher level to lower level. Arboreal adaptation. Adaptation for climbing. Have a look. These monkeys are climbing the trees, and they are adapted for climbing. Arboreal adaptation. So arboreal adaptation in the snakes. Snakes are very skilled climbing the trees, rocks, or even a wall. So they show a very high degree arboreal adaptation. And they can make a kind of a spiral, coiling, 
motion or they just attach against the wall or trunk of the tree. Arboreal, uh, so they have got an arboreal life. Well, oh my God, have a look. The, the mother, um, the monkey with the baby monkey just hanging on the cliff. So it's, it's scary. They have got an arboreal life and they are very skilled climbing the rocks. Probably they are searching for the food. An arboreal adaptation in wild lizard. Wild lizard moves on wall or ceiling due to adhesive pads. So have a look. This is the wild lizard. I think this is very common to everyone. They come to your house on the ceiling next to the electric bulb to find some of the insects. And on the lower lower person of the um, pits, they have got such a structures. Uh, such a structure is known as adhesive pads. They're meant for uh, attachment against the wall or ceilings. Okay, so arboreal adaptation in wall leisure. Likewise, posterior adaptation in rat and rabbit. Posterior means digging, making a hole. They dig hole and they live in the hole, and they show uh, the very high degree of posterior adaptation. Posterior adaptation means running adaptation. The horses are adapted for running. They have got the hooves, hooves, hooves down there, just like shoes, like a structure, and it's very long legs and very strong. Um, the body built up is very strong and able to uh, run very fast. So the horses are adapted for running and they show very high degree cursorial adaptation. Likewise, cursorial adaptation is performed by cheetah too and they uh, are said to be the fastest animals um, on, the, on the planet. Uh, and some of the land animals, uh, including the horse and cow, deer and goat, they have got the hooves. Hooves means shoes like structure down there and these are for uh, the running for the protection of the legs from some of the, uh, the pointed pieces of the stones or uh, spines and offense and defense means for fighting and for kicking. So these are adapted for these, hooves. Hooves means shoes like strokes are very hard. And horns of the buffalo for offense and defense, the buffalo fight with the enemies with the help of the, the horns, okay, horns. So weapons of the buffalo is basically the horns. The thick fur egg keeps the body warm. Eggs are found in the uh, high altitude, uh, the Himalayan region where there is very cold and the thick fur keeps the body warm. And the hoof help them to walk through the steepy off hills um, in high altitude and horns um, help them the fighting against the enemies and keep themselves uh, the safe or their family safe. Tiger adapted for hunting and running. So they have got very strong paws and very strong canine teeth. They are carnivorous and they are adapted for hunting means killing and adapted for running and they can run. They, they can run very fast. They have got very strong uh, the limbs. Okay, so adaptation of desert animals. Okay, let's talk about one very important example. That's a camel. So what happens especially in the camels? They have got broad feet, longer eyelashes because of that the eyes are get protected um, from the sand blown by the wind in the desert. They have got hump at the back. That is for the stories of the that is for the stories of the water. So this is the hump. So it's a hump, uh, a swollen um, something um, structure muscular structure that's called hump that is for storage of fat normally people think of water that's wrong and they have got a water restoring pouch inside the stomach but some biologists say that this is not the water actually they drink and they store that's a physiological water what does it mean when the fat of the hump it burns while walking um, then after one of the products it gives the water and that water gets accumulated in the stomach that can be reused in the body. That's good. That's called physiological water. They produce very concentrated urine. Urine contains a very small amount of water so as to protect, conserve the water, save the water in the body as much as possible. And also, uh, the camels produce very dry fecal matters uh, to save the water. Why do camel 
produce very concentrated urine and dry fecal matters to conserve the water in the body as much as possible because they live in the dry place, the desert. There is no water. Once the camel drinks water, that can be last for a couple of months. A couple of months. Many of the smaller creatures remain inside during the hot day. Uh, some of the smaller creatures found in desert, they remain inside the, uh, the sand during the hot day to keep the body cold. When they, are, they come out only during the uh, night time. For example, camel, desert snakes, some of the arachnids, these are some examples of the desert animals. Now basically, if you remember uh, the camel, let's go. So I have a look, the camel, the ship of the desert, because it is mainly used for uh, transportation in the ship and, sorry, desert, and that is why this is called ship of the desert. So that's a camel. Camel has got a hump here, hump for storing the fat, not the water. So, so what is right fact of camel? So the, the first one is, is, is a camel with the humps and there is water, that's wrong. And second one is the camel with the hump um, the, with the fat, uh, that is right. So hump stores the fat, not the water. That is the fact of camel. What is the hump of the camel uh, for? That is for storing the fat, not the water. It's camel, fact and adaptation. So, it's the f so in the hump, there is the fat and fat burns to provide the energy. And long neck, so yeah, so that sort of things. So broad, broad feet, uh, that is that is suitable to walk through the sandy trail of the um, desert. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you so much. Um, you have a good day today. Uh, so I finished the chapter adaptation. So I think you have got a book. So I'd like to ask you to do the exercise given in a book. Uh, I think pretty much information I explained to you. Um, and next week we will go uh, through a new, new lesson. Um, stay safe, stay home, have a good day today. Bye, see ya.